This morning at 11, Jack falls for a lady with an overprotective big brother on Three's Company. How did you find this out so fast? Oh, well, it wasn't very complex, Raven. I'll, I'll send these over to you if you'd like, but uh, first, let me give you a, a brief idea here. Um, uh, there's uh, one uh, date lined Zurich, Switzerland, almost three years ago. Um, rescuers finally reached the remnants of a light private aircraft late yesterday afternoon, 12 kilometers from the village of Sundermann in the Levantine Alps. The aircraft was owned and piloted by Skylar Whitney, international playboy, and heir to the Samuel Whitney fortune. The flight plan was filed for passage between Bern and a ski resort in the southern Levantines and listed a passenger, Jefferson Brown, known to be a personal friend of the pilots. A rescue party, which reached the site of the crash, reported the plane apparently had slid into a mountain crevice upon impact and only a few remnants of the plane have been found. Identification was made through serial numbers found on a piece of the tail section. There were no known survivors. I don't know what to say. Well, now, uh, here's another one. It's, it's a brief one, just a follow-up uh, two months later. And this one is also Dateline Zurich. Skylar Whitney, international society figure, has been released from the hospital after spending many weeks in a coma. Mr. Whitney was found in a mountain lodge near the village of Sunderman after the plane crash that took the life of his friend and co-pilot, Jefferson Brown. Mr. Whitney plans to resume his business activities in Missouri and other international capitals in the near future. You've spoiled it, Raven. Damn you. You've spoiled it all. Edge of Night is brought to you by New Formula Era, a new combination of powerful cleaners concentrated into one quarter cup, and by Ivory Liquid. Penny for penny, it washes more dishes than an average bargain brand. You took a bargain brand dishwashing liquid. If I gave you the money, which would you buy? Hmm? Ivory. I would take this. Why Ivory Liquid? It's nice to my hands. So why did you buy this product? It's a lot cheaper. What if I told you that Ivory Liquid is a better buy? You'd have to show me. Let's test your brand against Ivory Liquid with a penny's worth of each. We'll wash some dishes, okay? Mr. Clark, how are your sets holding up? They're practically gone. And what about the Ivory Liquid sets? I'm in good shape. Let's scoop some up and compare. Are you kidding? So tell me what happened. He ran out of sets, and I had more. So I washed some more dishes. What is the result, then? We'd save money by buying the ivory liquid. You can do more with less. What do you want to do? I'm going to pick up some ivory. You don't have to give up mild ivory liquid to save money. When we set out to improve a great laundry detergent, we wanted to keep the powerful cleaners that work on ordinary dirts, that cut through food stains, that get out grease and oil, and add powerful cleaners that clean collar soil even better than before. So that's what we did. All in the concentrated quarter cup called New Formula Era. So effective, it cleans clean through. Watch Era clean through collar soil, taco grease, and motor oil. We treat only the top with a teaspoon of Era, rub, run under warm water, and look. New Era cleans clean through. That's the kind of power you get in Era's little quarter cup. New Era, power that cleans clean through. Me too. Mm. You want dessert? Oh, no, Kelly, I give up. <laughs> Good, because I got a better idea. What's that? How would you like to go over to Mike and Nancy's and have an after-dinner drink with them? 
Oh, Kelly, that is a wonderful idea. I would love to. I love being with the cars. They make me feel so at home here. I know exactly what you mean. Now, I've been on the receiving end of that kind of kindness and generosity for some time now. Well, folks, I'm just checking over here. Is everything all right? Everything is wonderful, Sid. Thank you. I enjoyed it, too. It was really fine. You know, lunch as well as dinner. Now, you can't say I'm not a loyal customer. Well, that's what I like to hear. You can't get any better than that. If we ever open for breakfast, you'll be the first to know. Good. You want anything else? Uh, no, just a check. Thank you. Oh, okay. That's right. I saw you in here for lunch with Jody. You know, Kelly, you haven't told me much about Jody and you. Well, there really isn't that much to tell, Val. You know, we're good friends. We're supportive of each other. We try to help out all that we can. We enjoy each other's company, but, but that's about it. Well, that's nice. I mean, it's nice to have a friend like that to share things with. How long have you known her? We've known each other about a year now. Listen, Val, when I was going through a very difficult period in my life, Jody was very supportive, and I'll always be grateful to her for that. Always. And now that she's going through a difficult period, I'm trying to... Well, let's just say I'm trying to help, too. Well, I'm sure you'll be able to, Kelly. It's funny, you know, the, the way things can, uh, can be pulled apart. You know? Well, both of us are involved in our professional careers right now. She with hers, and me with mine. Instead of bringing us together, it's just pulling us further apart. Also, I realized lately that, uh, that there's... Well, maybe we didn't know each other as well as we thought we did. What do you mean by that? Well, I think that Jody's attention is uh, someplace else. Someplace else? Is that where or to whom? It's to whom? It's Gavin Wiley. The trouble is, I don't think that either of them are quite aware of it yet. But you're sure of it? Yes. Yes, I am now. Well, is that why you're backing away from Jody? Well, that's one of the reasons, but, uh, but there are others. Such as? Such as Skylar Whitney. I don't think that he's a very honest or trustworthy producer. He's a manipulator. He maneuvers people to get out of them just what his little heart desires. I don't trust him. I don't think that Jody should either. Well, I don't really know him that well, so I don't have an opinion on that. Well, in any case, Jody and I are, are moving further and further apart. It's gradual, but believe me, it's there. And you think Jody's moving closer to Gap? Well, that's okay. See, that's what I wanted to talk to her about at lunch today, but, but the timing was wrong. She's very nervous and uptight right now with the opening coming up, which is very soon. I just couldn't ask her to deal with a heavy emotional subject like that. She's got too many other things on her mind. Well, I can understand that. I'm glad. Because that means we can understand each other. Well, listen, um, why don't we go over to the cars now and have that, uh, have that drink I was talking about? Huh? so nervous, Miss Travis. Mr. Whitney asked me to drive you home. Me? Yeah, I'm not nervous. Oh, well, why do you keep looking out the rear window? Um, uh, I'm, I'm just making sure that you're going the right way, that's all. Oh, uh, you'll get there safe. After all, it's my job. You see, uh, Mr. Whitney, he likes to be very careful about his uh, properties, his, uh, his investments, uh, you understand? And that's my job, is to look after everything he owns, including people that work for him. But the people aren't property or investments. I don't care what Mr. Whitney says. People haven't owned people in this country since 1865. What you're talking about is slavery. 1865, huh? Well, imagine that. And I think somebody better tell Mr. Scott and Whitney that, because he sure thinks he owns you, Miss Travis. Yeah. And he owns your little friend, Gavin Wiley, and he owns his lawyer, Stuart Cademan, and his
is why Raven, yeah, he even owns me, Gunther S. Wagner. Gunther, he might think he owns all those other people, but he doesn't. He doesn't own me. Ha. You can think what you want. I will. You know, it's very clear to me that you don't like your employer very much, do you? Well, that's not true. Now, listen, I left a very good life to go to work for Mr. Schuyler Whitney. Yeah, I know, I know. He compensates me very well for my loss, but uh, not well enough. What, uh, what kind of good life did you leave to go work for Mr. Whitney Gunther? I left a very nice little woman and a very comfortable home life. And I think that proves what I think about my fine employer. You were married? Uh, did I say I was married? No, I was living with my little lady friend until the trouble. What trouble? What kind of trouble? Oh, I can just imagine the trouble. I don't think you'd believe the trouble I went through with that woman. You know, you're right. I, I probably wouldn't believe it. So you know what? You, you don't even have to tell me. Just, just drive me home, OK? Yeah, well, I think I'm going to tell you anyway. I mean, see, she was a little off upstairs, you see. And then, and now, I mean, damn it, she went right around the bend. And everything was, you know, just fine. And it was just fine until she started seeing all these little crawly things come through the windows. And then that's when I knew that uh, I had to put her in an institution where she could get some help. I mean, hell, I, I, I couldn't handle her anymore. And it's too bad because I kind of miss her. Yeah. We had some very good times, me and that little lady. She was so cute. Kind of sexy looking. Just like you. Yeah, just like you. You know, I think we ought to find a place to stop. No! No, Gunther, you don't have to stop. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Come look. I know a place right around here. I I've parked here before. No, Gunther, you don't have to stop. Just take me home. That's all I want to do is go home. I won't put on my bikini till I take it off with me. I won't put on my disco dress till I take it off with Neat. Neat hair remover works better than razors. Look, razors only cut at the surface, but Neat works below skin surface. Five days later, you see stubble on the razor leg, but the Neat leg is still smooth, so you look nicer in your bikini, in your disco dress. I don't go out with Bobby till I take it off with Neat. New cocoa butter, too. Neat for smoother legs longer. My friend Billy here is a legend. He's conquered every fence, tree, and vacant lot on the block. But in Levi's jeans, there my old pals met his match. Turn around, Billy. Since 1850, Levi's jeans have lived through everything from bucking broncos to bicycle sprockets to Billy. <laughs> right. Levi's jeans in denim or corduroy. Because a legend does not come apart at the seams. Well, now, we can just carry on a little easier, don't you think? I mean, uh, I kind of like to carry on a little bit, don't you? Look, look, if, if you're, if you're going to drive me home, then do it. If not, just unlock the doors and let me out of here. Why, you in a hurry? Kavanaugh's waiting dinner for you? You know, I, I don't doubt it. They probably are. And if I'm not home soon, Gunther, they're really going to start to get worried. They'll come out looking for me. Oh, well, now that's too bad. I mean, that's not good at all. Listen, I'll tell you what. If you're hungry, we'll stop someplace, get a hamburger and a beer, huh, after a while? No, no, no. I, I think that you have had enough beer, right? It wasn't beer. Well, it wasn't champagne. Uh, I, I know that that's your, your drink. Look, I'm waiting. Now move this car. Oh, God, you sound just like a cop. Now move this car. Well, I'm not going to move it. I'm going to sit right here until we get to know each other a little better. No, I, I don't want to know you any better than I already do. In fact, I don't want to know you at all, so just please start the car and take me home. Oh, come on now. Don't play like you don't want to know me better. Now, look, I told you the difference between 
a man and a boy. And I bet you've just been wondering about that all this time. Just bet you have. So? I think I'm going to come back there and we can talk about it. going to be really happy for the first time and she had to go and ruin it she couldn't just let me be she couldn't just let me be all right all right now wait a minute just just take it easy just just think all right she knows why the hell did she have to find out? Why? All right, okay, never mind that now. Just, just, just think it out. For God's sake, just think it out. Hello, baby. I'm starved. How about you? Oh, well, that's right, dinner. Well, why don't you go uh, talk to Chrissy? Well, I fear that whatever was cooking in there is probably all dried up by now. Well, as I told you, that is your department, so why don't you handle it? Oh, okay. Tell you what. Why don't I um, fix up one of my special combinations? Such as? Um, let's see. Such as frozen pizza, champagne <laughs> and i'll even make it except chrissy has to put it in the oven <laughs> <laughs> well that's rather a curious combination but then again you're rather a, a curious person aren't you well i'll um be right back You. What? Drowning nature's vegetables in that heavy oil. Crisco oil's light. Light? No oil tastes lighter. So? So there's no heavy oily taste. Mom! On your salad. Here, nature girl. Mm, no heavy oily taste. This is so organic. I think it's delicious. Huh? Why do Crisco oil salads taste great? No heavy oily taste. And Crisco oil has no cholesterol. You making coffee? Well, the coffee was so delicious this morning. I wanted some more. Mrs. Olson, <laughs> he's never liked coffee that much before. You said Folgers is different. Sure, it's a special blend, the best I've ever tasted. And Folgers is mountain grown, the richest, most aromatic kind of coffee. You make great coffee, honey. I know. Delicious mountain grown Folgers. Betsy smells funny. That's baby smells. Smelly formula, sticky baby food. Diapers. <laughs> That's ammonia. Baby laundry is a special problem. So instead of regular detergent, I use Dreft with enriched borax. It's specially made for baby laundry. There's borax in grain after grain of Dreft. Dreft gets tough baby laundry clean and clean smelling. Now she smells good. Dreft cleans baby smells out of baby laundry. Well, I'm delighted that you wanted to spend time with us, Valerie. Is it our air conditioning? <laughs> <laughs> it is hot out, isn't it? Oh, oh yes, yes. But you know it wasn't that, Mrs. Carr. When Kelly suggested it at dinner, I said, let's go. Well, I hope you'll always feel welcome in this house, Valerie. Here, here. The truth is, I am very, very grateful to be with friends. Tonight, especially. Why tonight, especially? <laughs> well, it's just that I've been having this problem. I haven't been able to sleep recently. I just lie there and think about my father. I've been wondering whether I will ever be able to speak to him again. 
And it's very frustrating because there are a lot of things that I want to say to him. Valerie, uh, the Kavanaugh's were here with us for dinner tonight, and uh, Dr. Kavanaugh suggested that the reason for your father's slow recovery might be due in part to his lack of motivation, that perhaps it's his way of retreating from reality. That thought occurred to me too, Mr. Carr. Heaven knows the realities are enough to make anyone retreat. Well, you are aware that he feels he's protecting you. Oh, yes, I'm aware of that, Mrs. Carr. It's just awfully hard to deal with. Hey, Val, uh, you haven't met Miles and Nicole Cavanaugh yet, have you? No, I haven't actually met them. I, I did take some pictures of them at the Whitney wedding, though. Right. Well, when you do, you'll love them because they're great people. It's too bad you uh, didn't arrive earlier while they were still here, but Nicole had to go back to the station for the late news. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, um, it's about time for that now, isn't it? Would mm -hmm. you like to watch, Mel? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Oh. Thanks. The fire was brought under control by three units of the Monticello Fire Department after nine hours of battling the blaze. Fire Chief Dudley Harmon says that there will be a full investigation to determine the cause of the fire. Damages are estimated at a half a million dollars. And this just in. Dr. Kenneth Bryson, the plastic surgeon indicted in the kidnapping of Nancy Carr, has died. Several days ago, Dr. Bryson suffered a severe heart attack and was... I'm sorry. We all are. Look, it's terrible that you have to do it like this. Uh, yeah. Valerie, we're going to help you. It's... <laughs> no, no. Oh, no. You're not going to be alone. You won't. Look behind you. <laughs> Valerie, <laughs> I want you to stay with us tonight. Right here. <laughs> Valerie Bryson now resides in Monticello. After receiving degrees in Europe, Dr. Bryson began a distinguished career as a plastic surgeon, first in France and Switzerland. His expertise was sought by international jet setters, politicians, and movie stars. As his reputation spread, other clients, notable in the underworld, began to seek out Dr. Bryson's skills. These clients paid huge sums of money to have their features altered in order to escape pursuit by legal or political enemies. Eventually, Dr. Bryson was able to found a chain of clinics throughout Western Europe. In particular, the clinic in Lucerne, Switzerland, became notorious as a surgical center. This was where no questions were asked of any patient who could afford the astronomical fees. A reliable source has reported that patients at these clinics were given numbers, like Swiss bank accounts, to ensure their privacy. Gradually, the Bryson clientele consisted almost exclusively of members of international crime syndicates and terrorist groups, all seeking anonymity. The services offered by the Bryson clinics allegedly were sustained by either blackmail or coercion. One infamous client was Ira Gideon, a renowned embezzler now serving a term in the state penitentiary. When Swiss authorities became troubled by the Bryson Clinic's unsavory reputation, they began an investigation of Dr. Bryson and his staff. It was then that the operation moved from Switzerland and established new bases in the United States. In Monticello, the establishment was called the Rexford Institute, and it was named after Dr. Bryson's second wife, Elizabeth Rexford. It is unknown and may never be determined how many identities were changed both here and abroad by the skillful, if misguided, artistry of Dr. Kenneth Bryson. Diet soft drink, girls. Yeah, aftertaste. But not sugar free Dr. Pepper. Yeah, sugar free Dr. Pepper. Taste that thing, but it's not. It's not like juice with aftertaste. What a great taste this was not. Sugar free Dr. Pepper. Taste that thing, but it's not. Go. Imagine. 
imagine these few groceries for dinner for the four of us cost over $12. I give up. Don't give up. For about $3, your whole family can enjoy Chef Boyardee's spaghetti and meatballs, a salad, and a drink. All four of us? Tasty spaghetti and meatballs with Chef Boyardee's special sauce for that great taste you just can't get anywhere else. What a delicious meal. <laughs> what a great price. A Chef Boyardee, a delicious hot meal with meat at a price you can afford. Tomorrow night at 8, Neil Sedaka hosts part three of The Roots of Rock and Roll, which examines the years 1963 to 66. Then at 9, it's a special three-hour premiere episode of Against the Wind, the tale of a young woman's struggle for freedom among political upheaval in Ireland. Despite the fact that perhaps hundreds of underworld figures have escaped detection with the help of Dr. Bryson's plastic surgery, an investigation is underway in an attempt to reveal at Did least some of the names of patients uh, involved yeah. in what is known in official it. investigative circles as the Janus operation. The search goes on. Unquestionably, it will be a long one. And it is in Lucerne, Switzerland, where the investigation is centered, at least at present. Is, uh, Lucerne near Zurich? Um, yeah, yes, as a matter of fact. I believe it is. To, uh, Dr. Bryson. May he rest in peace. Some folks just can't figure out Campbell's chunky sirloin burger. On the one hand, it's soup, so the feller can eat it with a spoon. On the other hand, it's got all these tasty little burgers made of real sirloin that a feller can eat with a fork. So is it a soup or is it a meal? Heck, that's easy. Chunky's the soup that eats like a meal. Chunky sirloin burger with real sirloin. It's the soup that eats like a meal. In West Texas, the sun hits like a weight. The soil cracks, and the dust coats your throat with thirst. But one thing washes it clean. 